Have you been playing fantasy football the last several years and you're ready to take that next step and be a commissioner and run your own league? Well, today I am going to show you how to start your own fantasy football league using the Yahoo fantasy football platform. Let's get right into it. The Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast with Waiver Wire Queen. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football and you're trying to stay ahead of your competition for the upcoming season. And if you are just starting out and want to learn how to play fantasy football, we have a lot of great content to help you prepare for your journey as a future champion of your fantasy football league. Let's talk about the Yahoo platform. So I typically use the Yahoo platform fantasy football platform for most of my redraft leagues. So today we're going to do a redraft league. A redraft league is a fantasy football league where you draft a new team every year. So unlike Dynasty, where you keep your team that you draft, the redraft, every year your league is renewed or you join a league, you're going to have a different team with different players unless you decide to continue to draft the same players which some people do have their faves, but typically a redraft league, you're going to continue to redraft your team every year. So let's get ready to create this league so you can take, let's, so let's get ready to create this league so you can take the next step as a commissioner, AKA commish. Let's go. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you have access to Yahoo. So you can, um, if you don't have like your Yahoo email, just create a Yahoo account and you'll go to, we'll start from the beginning. You're gonna go to Yahoo Sports, click sports and then select fantasy. And we're gonna do fantasy football and you'll see either join a league or create a league and we're going to create our own league. So there's a lot of information you really need to know. You're gonna to wanna to know what you want to name your league. And for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to call this a test. Okay, so you have to name it and then league type. So you get to select the league type. So you can do a head to head or you can do points. So head to head, it pretty much says our most popular league type, compete against a different team each week to win the most stat categories, each win, loss or tie counts in the league settings or points. Stats equal points, compete with other teams in your league to finish with the most points over the entire season. So you got to figure out the type of league you want to set up or we can do a copy league, but we're going to do head to head. And again, that is very important because some people only like playing in certain types of leagues. So that is key in um, pretty much getting your league started and invite permissions. And this is pretty much self-explanatory. You can have it commission only or all managers can invite. I would uh, leave it at commission only unless you let everyone in the league know that, hey, do not send any invites out to anyone unless I'm, I'm telling you so. Because you may have someone who wants to get their friend in and that may not be someone you want in the league or you may already have slots, you know, spoken for from other for other people and you don't want someone in your league who you don't know. And you pretty much want to know a little bit about the people in your league. Now draft, so this is the draft type. So they're, they have four different types. Live draft, that's pick a player in each round of your online draft, just like the pros, which typically is what um, most people do. You can do a live salary cap draft. I've done this for um, baseball, not for fantasy, and you bid fake dollars on real players and an online salary cap draft. It's actually fun 
Um, I've been considering that for my dynasty league, but you know, everyone is like, no, nah, we don't want to do it. So it's, it's fun though. I'll tell you that much. Auto draft, take it easy and let us draft the teams in your league for you. Uh, nobody's going to want to do that. Everyone uh, likes two things about fantasy trading and drafting. Okay. People probably do mock drafts from now until the season. So drafting shouldn't be on auto. People want to pick their players and people enjoy the draft. Offline draft, draft online and submit the results online. And that is like something a lot of people do. Some people will have draft parties and, you know, everyone has their big boards. That is fun. I would love to be a part of that one day. People go to um, different restaurants and, and host their drafts. There are restaurants that cater to uh, the fantasy football drafting too. So um, keep that in mind. The draft parties are, are pretty fun. I'll tell you that. And exciting. Okay, so draft date. You select the date, and I recommend kind of consulting with your league to see, you know, when everyone is available. Ain't nothing like having a draft where barely anyone is there. That's not going to be a fun league. And then you just set the time, and you determine if this is going to be a points per reception league, which is the PPR, which means you're going to give them point for um, each reception. Half point, that's self-explanatory. It's a half a point for each um Reception full point is a full point that's most likely going to be one point, no points. That's a standard league where you're not receiving any um points, so it's not a PPR league. So you have your standard league and your PPR league. And I recommend doing a PPR league because that is pretty much taking over fantasy. I, I haven't done a standard league in probably about two, maybe three years, because it's just boring to me. I, I like the PPR leagues. So it's up to you, though, because it's going to be your league. And then you can select whether you want to have a flex roster spot. And you can even select yes or no. Um, this is new that they added here in the past. You just go into, you can even customize your settings and do it there on how you want your roster set up. Or you can pretty much, you know, do it here now, which is which is fine, but we'll go in and show you the roster setup. So, and then you just hit finish. So it's set up, but there's more to it. You know, you got to send your invites out. And again, you can copy the link and, and send it to people that way. You can email people. You can, you have multiple ways and you're not going to be able to draft until you fill up your league. So let's just quickly go into some of the tools to show you some other things that you'll need to do to kind of get your league going. And one of the main things is obviously you want to have your uh, roster set up the way you want it to be and also stats. We're going to go into that. So with um, Yahoo, they have this commissioner tool. You can click on it or you can come right here to league and then go down to settings as well. But let's just click on the commissioner tools. It should take you where you need to go to make all of your moves. You have your league settings, roster and scoring. That's where we're going to go. Schedules and playoffs, draft and keepers. You can also convert it to a keeper league and you, and you can determine how many players you want each team to keep every year. And then at some point you can designate a deadline after the season. If you're going to convert it over to a keeper league, say you want them to keep two players and they'll have the option to select two players off their team to carry into uh, the next season. But this is going to be a redraft league. So you're not keeping anyone. Everyone is going to draft every season, redraft every year. And then you have uh, manage other teams if you need to, to go in and, and manage other teams. And you can add a logo. So let's click on the add logo and just choose a logo. So we're going to just choose this logo right here. And so you can get fancy with it if you want. And you see other options. This is obviously the name of the league. And you can create a unique league URL. So we're going to do FF, FFL test. And that's going to be our, our league URL. And then again, right here, you can update those invite permissions. You can select how many teams. And the max is 20. Um, I used to play in leagues with 16 teams, but most people now are just not comfortable with it. I'm still very comfortable with it because that's all I used to do. Most people 
stay right here at the 12. So let's make it a 12 team. If you know that you have the same group of people who you're going to be, you know, playing in the redraft league with every year, you can put it on auto renew and, and make sure everybody wants to, you know, come back the next season, or you can put it on auto renew because you don't want to keep deleting the league or having to recreate all of your settings and everything. So, um, I would leave it on auto renew if you are sure that you're going to continue on with this league and you can make league publicly viewable. No, this should be just your private league with the people that you invite league pick them games. You can select that option as well. And it says pick the winner of each weekly matchup and see how you rank against the rest of the league, which is cool. Cause you, you know, it's, that's a little fun. You can edit league settings here. Send invites again, cancel invitations, assign commissioner access if you want to have a co-commissioner. If you are someone who is busy and you're unavailable a lot, you may want to have a co-commissioner and you want to make sure that someone who's reliable and you can trust to help you run your league. You can edit commissioner notes. That's if you put some notes, you can go in there and change them. Public, Publish league, add your league to the, to the published list of available custom leagues. I don't recommend not messing with that. Convert to a private prize league. You have that option as well. Email league. If you want to send emails out to the league and delete league, be careful with that. If you delete the league, it's done. It's over with. So if you want to delete your league, make sure you are 100% certain that that's what you want to do. And then right here, you say, so let's just go in and take care of what we truly came here to take care of. So let's first go to the roster settings and we're going to leave it standard for uh, the purposes of this tutorial. So you're going to have your one quarterback league. This is not going to be a super flex or two quarterback league. So it's going to be one quarterback. going to keep it standard Two wide receivers, two running backs, one tight end. And then you have a flex one flex position and you have a kicker and one defense. And then we're going to have six bench positions and two IR slots. I, I recommend having a minimum of two IR slots for your league because you know it's football, players are going to get hurt, and then we still are dealing with COVID to a certain extent. So you're definitely going to want to have these options available for your league. And then again, have a decent amount of bench slots. There's no right or wrong way. Don't overload the starters. You don't want to have too many starters. So just kind of do your research on what you feel is going to be the best roster. I got a tutorial coming out on the best roster format and the best scoring format for fantasy football. So stay tuned to those uh, two episodes coming out soon. And again, this is a very good lineup. I'll tell you, for me, I really like doing the uh, two quarterback or super flex leagues. Now it's very fun. It's competitive. It is the bombdiggy.com. All right, so we're going to save our settings. Every time you do something, just save your settings because you're going to want to make sure that whatever updates you make, it takes. And then again, right here, you just hit submit. But we're not going to change anything, so we don't have to save any settings, but we'll just hit submit just so you'll see that once you do submit your changes, it, it shows here it's going to be green. It's going to say your commissioner changes have been saved. If it's certain type of changes, you'll see that in the league, um, on the league page and under the uh, league notes, you'll see whatever type of changes to um, the league. And that's good because everybody wants to, you know, make sure that the commissioner is on an up and up. You know, you hear horror stories, but it happens and just be transparent and just kind of let your league know everything that's going on and what you're doing. And now scoring, very important. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the right, you know, scoring categories selected. And you can select a max of 26 categories, right? They have 26. So if you want, you can select all 26, but you're going to want to just make sure it's competitive. You don't want to have a league where people are scoring three, 400 points. That's boring. That's crazy. And that's just unrealistic. So be careful when you are selecting the points. So fractional points, you can do that if you want. So let's say you can leave it on yes or no. Negative points, yes, for things like, say, uh, fumble losses and things like that. And you can also go in here and select as well. If you're going to add negative points, make sure you put the, make sure it says negative points, right? 
You see? So we're doing negative one points. If you want to do a half a point, just do it like this. And it'll be end up being um, a half a point. So yeah, you got to make sure you do the negative and make sure you do the half. And again, if you want to change anything, you can't. So say we want our quarterbacks to get six points on a touchdown. So we'll do that. Interceptions, they're going to lose a point because that's a negative. Passing yards, 25 yards equals one point, okay? Some leagues like to do 20. So let's let's do 20, okay? Rushing touchdowns, they normally give six points for a rushing touchdown, but if you want to change it, you can. I say leave it at six. That's probably the best amount of points and it's standard for uh, rushing. And then you can do rushing yards, 10 yards equals one point. So for every 10 yards, um, that's one point. And you can add little extras if you want. You can do 40 plus yard run or 40 plus yard rushing touchdown and say you want to give like, say we're going to give two points for that. You know, you can make it fun, but, and make it incentive based also. But I do recommend if you're going to do that and say you're going to give the, uh, for rushing touch a 40 yard rushing touchdown, you're going to give them two points. And I say do it also for the other um, categories like passing and receiving just to make it consistent. And so see, we're going to do here and we're adding it and we're going to just give them two. And right now this is a half a point because you see it's a half. So this is a half PPR. And we're going to just say do that and make it a full PPR. And also remember you, you have a, um, kicker and you also have a defense too so you'll have to you know do that as well and we're gonna give six points for a return touchdown and then if you want you can also make it more in appealing and give points for give one point for a certain amount of yards in a return game so let's say for every 25 yards we'll give you one point so that's incentive base as well. And then here's some miscellaneous is two point conversions. You get two points. Fumble loss is negative two. You see, remember, if you want to do negative, make sure it says negative. And then for offensive fumble return for a touchdown is six points. So you can change that if you want, but that's standard and it should stay as such. And then also you have the options for um, the field goal. You can select, you want to give three points for zero to 20. I'm 19. Leave it at two. You know, you you can make your, your option. It's up to you how you want it to go. And you see, as you start doing the longer ones, you get more. Again, a lot of people have said that, hey, zero to 19 is just plain. It's simple. It's nothing to it. So they've pulled that down to two. But again, it's your league. So you have to make the ultimate decision. And you can take off yards for uh, field goals missed. I like to... It, take away points for missing the short field goal. So we're going to just say we're going to take away one point because there's no reason why you should be missing a 19 yard field goal. And then the 20 yard, these are uh, field goals. You can do, you can kick within your, with your eyes closed. We can kick those. Okay. So again, and make sure it just specifies that is for negative points. Here's something new field goal yards per point. Ooh. Okay. Let's read it. Well, let's look at it. Cause there's a lot to read y'all. It says when using this setting, the fractional points setting for your league is factored into determine the total points awarded for field goals. Okay, this is very interesting. This is new, so this is something to consider. And again, you do want to play around with some stuff, but I do recommend don't change anything in the middle of the season unless it's just something crazy like you realize you made a mistake and you're awarding 10 points or something strange for uh per reception otherwise just don't mess around with your with your settings once the season starts well i'll say after the draft because most people are going to be drafting based on your scoring settings so if you have a ppr league people may be targeting ppr back so once you hit start that draft don't change any any settings unless there's something that's obviously wrong and you're going to want to let the league know before you make that change and then now Defense and special teams. Here we go. And you get to select what you want. So to start, the game is obviously starting at zero. So um, based on this category, it says points allowed, zero points. So when you see the game right before the game starting, 
you'll see it says 10 points because that's zero points. And then you get to determine, you know, what you want to do after that. So 10 and then points allowed, one to six, seven. It, you see it goes down. And once you start getting into these high scoring games, then sometimes you'll, uh, you may consider the negative points. You can give points for sacks, interceptions, fumble recoveries, touchdowns. This is your world as the commissioner. You know what you like and you know what, the people you're going to play with like so you're going to want to make it very interesting fun and just you know a, a good setup you can do return yards if you want and again just make sure you do it i would say keep it consistent maybe 20 to 25 yards and they'll get one point you see for kickoff and punt return yards uh, touchdowns, you get six. You can add extra incentives down here. Fourth down stops, you know, um, tackles for loss. We used to do the tackles for loss. I used to give um, a half a point for that. Um, defensive yards allow negative. You can you can go in here and just make it more an incentive for the defense because a lot of people are moving more towards the um, leagues where they're not using a kicker or a defense. So if you want to go that route, make it more of an incentive for people to want to pay attention to, to the defense and draft uh, a, a defense and, and, and it'll be, you know, a little fun. You can get extra points for return two extra point return. That's what that is. Two points y'all. And then all these other bonuses here, like you got passing, you can select add up to three bonuses. So let's say I got a bonus one. So passing yards, let's say a 40, a 50 yarder, because there's no 50. I'm going to give you, say, three points or a 50 yarder. And that's just an example. And then say I go and do it here for a for 50 yards. Let's, you know, say, boom, here. And then the same thing for um, receiving. Let's just do that. I'm going to give you three points, you know. And then kicking, you can give extra points, too. And then bonuses as well for special teams. And then again, make sure you're saving and you'll know that those uh, categories and those changes have pretty much been updated. When you see your commissioner changes have been saved and it is green, that means you are good to go. Let's look at some other quick things before we uh, finalize your league because you are a commissioner and you are taking it to the next level. So you get to look at the schedules and you can come here and edit schedules. If you want to skip weeks, don't do it. Okay. Quickly go into the schedule editor. Obviously we got to have some teams to do that, but it's, it's something that, you know, can be set up if you need to. And again, this is the keeper and draft section. So you can come here and change the draft type if you want it to be something other than uh, the live draft. You can switch it to the live with the salary cap, auto draft, or offline draft. Again, most people want to draft. So offline, just know that that's going to be something most likely um, you can do it virtual. But if you're going to do a virtual offline, you might as well do it in Yahoo. But if you do do offline, it's probably going to be somewhere where everyone is able to get to where you guys can meet in person. And then you get to select the time. So consider that as well and make sure it's just something that's convenient for everybody in the league. And then here you got your keeper status and then finalize team list. And it says finalize the team list to prevent managers from joining or leaving the league. Customize your league's draft order and assign keeper league. So once you finalize, um, the team list, that means that your league is full. You finalize that team list. You've done your um, randomization of the draft order, and you're good to go. And then here where you can manage other teams, that's when you lock teams, prevent any team from making any actions. And a lot of times in a redraft league, you're going to want to do that once it's playoff times and teams are eliminated from the playoffs because you don't want them dropping players or trying to add players, their season pretty much is done. Unless you have, um, say you have a toilet bowl uh, bracket and you are actually awarding something, then you're going to want to leave, leave it unlocked. But if not, and that's it for the teams that didn't make the playoffs, their season is over, then you can consider to lock those teams out. And you can edit league dues. So if there's any type of uh, league fee, you can go in here and you can set that. So let's see it. You see, 
That's right. To kids, excellent team. So say it's twenty five dollars due, and then once I pay you, I'll come here and hit. You know, and you can you can come here and put okay twenty five paid, and it'll show that I paid. If you want to put a note, you can as well, and then we'll hit submit. And look, your requested changes have been made. So let's click view changes here, and it'll show what you know I paid and my balance. So that's pretty cool as well. So let's go back to our tools. And see, um, it's probably a good idea if you are having a month in a money league or you're hosting a money league, probably go to a, a third party site who uh, specializes in managing the dues and consider those as well. So you don't have to worry about managing the league fees because that can get very stressful. And um, what else we got here? Okay, edit league dues. We did that. Edit team points. So say something fluky happens and you have to go in and fix up something with the points, you can go here and do so. Um, transfer teams. That's if you want to change the owner of an existing team. So say someone decides at the last minute they're dropping out and you have someone, you can go there and and – and do your transfer, remove teams. If, if you need to remove, ban somebody, you can do so. And you'll click it and you can either remove them or ban them. Whatever the action is, then you know that's that will determine what you need to do. And that's pretty much how you uh, create a standard PPR league using Yahoo. Again, guys, I really enjoy using the Yahoo platform for my redraft leagues. I do sleeper for um, a redraft winner takes all league, but I really like using um, the Yahoo platform as well. So come on now. If you are ready to take the next step and be a commission, hit that subscribe button and follow for more so you can prepare yourself to be a commissioner or if you just want to play the game, we have a lot of great content, which is going to help you prepare for the upcoming season so you can stay ahead of your competition. But again, you want to be a commissioner. I'm a commissioner, all right? Wave of Wire Queen is commissioned out here in these fantasy football streets, so I know you can do it. And we have a lot of great content to help you prepare as a commissioner. It's time, y'all. You've been playing a game for years. It is time for you to be a commissioner and run your own league. Make sure you hit the like button and leave some comments and let me know which platforms you are considering utilizing to host your fantasy football league. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast.